everybody, welcome to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and here on my YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm gonna quickly show you how to get your audio interface to be recognized by Studio One. I get a lot of questions from people who just picked up their interface. Typically, it's a PreSonus interface. They got it bundled with Studio One. They got everything installed. They're on this page that you're looking at right now, whether you have the artist version or the professional version, and they can't seem to figure out why Studio One doesn't recognize their audio interface, or if it does, uh, recognize their interface, they plug something in, they try to record, they don't hear any sound. So I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks to make sure, things that you need to do before to make sure that your audio interface is set up properly and that you can start recording right away. Before we get to that, if you like what you see in this video, please consider subscribing and make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I post another video. Also, I want you to go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and I wanna give you five free mixing training courses. It's my gift to you just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com and if you stick around to the end of the video, I have another gift for you absolutely free. So let's jump on over here. So here we are in Studio One. You got Studio One installed and you want to know how to get your audio interface to be recognized. Now the first thing you have to remember, regardless of the audio interface that you're using, it is always preferable that you plug in that USB interface or FireWire interface or USB-C interface, depending on when you're watching this video, or your Thunderbolt interface if you're using Mac, you wanna plug it directly into your computer. The number one reason that I get from people who email me about the interface not working is they try to plug it into a hub or even a powered hub. And all those, sometimes that will work. I have seen that work from time to time. It is inconsistent. Sometimes Studio One will see it, sometimes it won't. If it does see it, it could drop out. You'll have uh, intermittent drop dropouts, you always want to plug it directly into your computer, whether it's Mac or PC. That's step one, okay? Step two, if you're using a pre-Sonus interface especially, first you want to go watch the last video I just did. The link will be in the description box below where it tells you how to install Studio One and how to register your audio interface. Again, we're talking about pre-Sonus interfaces now. In that video, I show you how to download the Universal Control app. Now, this is really important if you're using a PC. For a Mac, you can get away without downloading Universal Control, but they're always changing and they're always updating and making the product and the software better. So I tell everyone, download Universal Control. You won't be able to use the interface well if you don't use it for a PC. That much I know from my PC users, although I'm a Mac user. If you wanna know how to, down, um, how to uh, download Universal Control, you are gonna go out to the PreSonus uh, website. You're gonna log into your user account after you registered your uh, hardware. And again, go watch the video from last week. It's in the description box below. You're gonna come over to the hardware tab and under your account, you're gonna see your hardware here. <coughs> Excuse me, in this case, I have a Studio 1810C. I'm gonna click on that. <coughs> Excuse me, here it is. Download Universal Control Act Mac. If you have PC, it'll say Windows or PC. You wanna make sure you do that. Once you do that, you can open up the Universal Control app, which is right here. And if you're using a PreSonus interface, you will see it here. In this case, I'm using an AudioBox i2 by PreSonus, and I also have a fader port plugged in. You'll see that there as well, okay? This is where you're gonna be able to change your sample rate and all of the stuff that we talk about in other videos, and also the device block size so you don't have any latency problems on a PC. PC, it's done under the Universal Control application. On a Mac, it's done in the, it's done in the uh, Preferences window. Again, you can watch one of my other videos on YouTube. I show you how to do that. Or you can also go out to Home Recording Made Easy and get the PreSonus Studio One Beginner's Guide. And you may, link will be in the description box below. Um, okay, so that'll talk about that. But you wanna have the Universal Control app. If you don't see your audio interface here, unplug it, replug it in, shut down your computer, restart your computer, it should recognize it, okay? It should do it. You also wanna make sure you have the latest version of Universal Control. So if you just downloaded it from their website, you won't have a problem, it'll be the latest version. But they're always updating this. I'd say about once a month, once every six weeks or so, there's an update, okay? You will see a little green box at the top of the Universal Control dialog box here. It'll say update available. Make sure you update it to the latest drivers or your interface may not be recognized and you may not be able to see it. Okay, so once you have your Universal Control application installed and you see your interface here, you can close that. Okay, you can leave it closed. Um, you're here on the start page, right under here where it says setup, here is your audio interface, configure audio device. 
and here you'll get the preferences window. Okay, again, Mac PC, this should look exactly the same. Here is your audio device. You have your audio device tab. You have a playback device and a recording device. Now, if you have multiple audio interfaces hooked up to your computer, and I do, you could drop down this drop down box and it'll show you the ones that you have. Here's the PreSonus i2 that I just talked about. I also have a Universal Audio Apollo, but you just change it. And if I change it to the i2, whoops, didn't click on it. There we go. It'll switch. You wanna make sure you hit apply if that box lights up and then hit okay. On a Mac, this is where you change your device block size right here. We talk about that in the PreSonus Studio One Beginner's Guide. Again, link in the description box below. On a PC, where is it taken care of? You remember, under the Universal Control app. Now they may change this in the future. If you're watching this video two years from now, this is 2020, this might be slightly different, but as of the recording of this video, this is how it's done. The device block size is done in Universal Control for a PC, not for a Mac, for a PC. Okay, so once you do that, and again, for now, you can just leave it at its default setting. If you're on a Mac, you can just leave it wherever it's defaulted at as a starting point is fine. Okay, once you have chosen your interface, and I'll go back and choose my universal audio one, hit okay, okay? Now, when you create yourself a new song and you, and you get yourself together to create yourself a new session, I have one already open here, you wanna come up to studio one, preferences now on a PC this is going to be under the options there's no option here on a Mac on PC is a little different than Mac there's going to be options an option menu go to options and then preferences but it'll take you to the same window okay right where we were a second ago right here universal audio you're going to come over to the audio setup tab and at the bottom you're going to come up to song or go down to song setup that is gonna bring you to your inputs and your outputs. So you just plugged in your interface and you have no sounds and you don't know why. You have an input tab, you have an output tab. So the first thing I do is go to my output tab. My output tab should be the physical outputs on the back of your audio interface that are going to your speakers. So if you have a little audio box USB or universal audio or uh, Focusrite Scarlett, whatever you have, there are always gonna be two quarter inch outputs on the back of that interface left and right, gonna to go to your main speakers, that is typically gonna be one and two. And on this particular interface, it's output one, output two. You can see left, right. And I can just click on here and switch, okay? That will en enable you, when you listen back to something, it'll play back through your speakers, right? Okay, so you wanna make sure you hit apply. Now on your inputs tab, this is where you're gonna plug in, let's say a vocal mic or a guitar mic or some source into the front of your interface, and you wanna be able to record music. Well, you have to set up the inputs, and every interface is gonna be a little different. So over here, I have four, well, actually this has eight, but we have, th we have four mic inputs on the front of my interface. Again, I have a Universal Audio Apollo. Okay, and you can see nothing's, nothing's uh, marked off here in the grid. Input one, I'm gonna click a little M, that's for mono. So, so let's say I'm gonna plug a, a vocal mic into input one. I gotta click that little one, I gotta click the input one channel. You'll see a little M for mono. I'm gonna hit apply down here in the bottom right hand corner. Okay, now let's say, uh, let's say I have four inputs and let's say I now have um, Input two is gonna be, say, my guitar. I'm gonna be a singer, guitar player for my recording. Well, I gotta click input two. Okay, we're gonna hit apply. Okay, so we have a little mono under input two. Now, if you have like something like a U, uh, audio box USB, that's all you have is two inputs. But let's say you have an interface with four inputs. And let's say you want three and four to be like a keyboard, either a keyboard left, right. You could do that, you can have a keyboard left, right, or you can use a stereo input. These are mono inputs. Let's say I wanna add a stereo input. I come down here where it says add stereo, see down here, okay? And let's say that's gonna be input three, four. Gonna hit three, four, right? Hit apply. And now I have a stereo input and my vocal mic happens to be plugged into channel four and that's why you see a little bit of signal here. Okay, you should see signal as soon as you plug something in and turn up the input game. Okay, so you have to make sure you have your input set up right and you have to make sure you have your output set up right or you're not gonna hear anything back. Once that is all done, you hit okay and that is how you set up 
an, uh, um, an interface uh, to your computer. Again, make sure you plug it directly into the computer. Mac or PC doesn't matter. Don't plug it into a hub. Make sure you download the Universal Control app, especially if you're using a PC. Okay, regardless of the version of Windows, you wanna make sure you have the Universal Control app and that your Universal Control app recognizes your PreSonus interface. Again, now this is for PreSonus interfaces. If you're not using a PreSonus interface, you don't necessarily need to download the Universal Control app, okay? Because you, you can see I use a Universal Audio Apollo and it doesn't show up in Universal Control. Universal Control is for the PreSonus products. But for most people that are watching this video, it's because you bought a, um, a PreSonus interface that came bundled with Studio One. That's the majority of the questions I get from you guys, so that's why I'm creating this video, okay? So Universal Control app, Plug it into the computer directly. Once you do that, make sure you come down to configure audio device. You can go to song setup and you wanna make sure that your inputs and your outputs are set up correctly. So when you plug something into the interface and start playing or singing, it will show up in Studio One. So I hope you found this video somewhat helpful. Again, make sure you like and subscribe. Now for watching this video, I wanna give you another free gift. I want to give you a 25% discount coupon code on any course on homerecordingmadeeasy.com. The coupon code is YouTube25. You just use that at checkout. It'll take 25% off the price of the course. It'll all be in the description box below. And that also includes 25% off the PreSonus Studio One Beginner's Guide. If you are someone that is brand new to Studio One, or if you're whether it's the first time you've ever used any digital audio workstation, or if you're coming from another DAW, the Studio One Beginner's Guide is the absolute course you want. It takes you from the time that you install your software, how to do what we just did in this video, as well as how to set up a session, how to get everything up and running for recording, for mixing, all the different features that you use most commonly on a day-to-day -day basis. It's 15 videos long. It's a little over a couple of hours, super affordable. It'll get you up and running with no fuss and no muss. So check out the PreSonus Studio One Beginner's Guide. Again, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, hit that notification bell. Give me the thumbs up, subscribe. And also let me know in the comments below, are you someone brand new to Studio One? And if you are, how do you like Studio One? What troubles are you having with Studio One? What other videos can I create for you to help you get up and running and working efficiently and having a great time working with Studio One? I'm here to help you. Leave comments below and let me know. And I will be reading those and answering all those comments myself. And until the next video, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com and I will see you very soon. Take care.